good afternoon. Shy about saying it. Uh, anyway. My name is Sanjay Rai, and I'm Dean of Science Engineering and Mathematics at Rockville Campus of Montgomery College. It is my honor and privilege to welcome you to the inaugural presentation of Science Engineering and Mathematics Lecture Series at the Rockville Campus of Montgomery College. This afternoon's presentation is on motherhood, the elephant in the laboratory, women scientists speak out. In my opinion, there could not have been a better venue for this very important discussion. A recent National Science Foundation data shows that nearly 60% of the science graduates in the nation begin their, begin their education at a community college. I will begin my introduction with our own Dr. Gina Wesley Hunt, professor in the biology department at the Rockville campus of Montgomery College, and she will introduce the rest of her colleagues on the panel. Gina. Thank you very much. Um, I would especially like to thank Dr. Rai for his generous support of this panel and his encouragement um, to talk about this issue. Uh, also, Miriam Carter did a lot of work to organize this, so thank you very much. A little, uh, little story about Dr. Rai and the reason why I knew Montgomery College was going to be a, a place that I could be happy. When he called to offer me the position, he had his sick daughter with him at the office, <laughs> and she started screaming during our discussion. And uh, I knew right then that if my dean was unembarrassed about having family be important, I knew that I would not have to hide my family really meant a lot, and the, I have been impressed. Also, uh, so I will introduce briefly the panelists, and then what will happen is uh, for the first half or less, each uh, panelist will just give a short, brief description of their story and why they became contributors to this book, and, uh, and then we will open it up and have a discussion for the next half. So I'd like to start with uh, Marla McIntosh. She is the professor of plant science and landscape architecture at the University of Maryland. So many of you may have her as a professor, as a, a junior or senior. And, uh, and then sitting next to her is Suzanne Epstein, and she's an, an immunologist at the FDA, Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research. Then next to her is the, Emily, uh, is the editor of the book, and her name is Emily Monison, and she's an environmental toxicologist and writer. The next uh, scientist is Marilyn Merritt, and she is an associate research professor of anthropology at George Washington University. And then next is Ann Douglas, who is an atmospheric chemist at NASA, the Goddard Space Flight Center. And last but not least is Andrea Kalf Kalfuglu, and she is assistant professor as Health Administration and Policy Program at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. So many of you may also have heard down the road as well. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> and um, Emily, our editor, will say a few things, and then we'll um, start with the individual stories. Thank you, Gina. Um, OK, first, I'd also like to thank the organizers. This is really nice. We've had a few panels, and I have to say, I'll say it publicly, that <laughs> this is just one of the nicest organized ones that we've had. We all feel like celebrities here. <laughs> so it's really nice. So thank you. Um, and I also want to thank Gina because, um, you know, to, for organizing this. And um, I'm sure if you've had Gina for a class, you know that she livens up any panel. <laughs> and so and Gina has been there for the panels that we've had. Um, and then I want to thank the contributors to the book. So this is the book. Um, and there are 34 contributors. They're all science moms. Well, actually, a couple are not. They're scientists who think maybe one day they'll be moms. Um, and um, these contributors were all here, except for Andrea, who couldn't make it because she had a conflict yesterday. But they've shown up for other panels in the DC area. And, um, and so somebody said to me the other day, when I was describing that I was going to come down here, and we have 10 people showing up yesterday, and there's you know seven of us today. And they're like, wow, you have a really active group of contributors, because a lot of times, People might contribute to the book, but then that's it. You know, they're done. That's end of story. And, you know, everybody just keeps coming back. And I think that's because this is not a one-shot issue. Your mother, your career person, um, it doesn't go away. And it's really important for all of us. And, um, and we hope, you know, we, to share 
sort of our stories because it's helped us to share them and we hope that it'll help other people who are coming up thinking about how are they going to balance family and career when it gets to that. So um, they're invested and I'm really grateful for that and I'm also grateful for them for writing their essays and contributing them because um, they had no clue what they were getting into. <laughs> um, so a little bit about the book. Um, this grew from my own frustration. So as Gina mentioned, I'm, a, I'm an environmental toxicologist. I was trained as a toxicologist. I thought I was going to go straight through and do the regular career route, which would be to work in an um, academic institute or maybe an industry. And um, I sort of started on that path. And once I had kids, I wanted to stay home with them. Um, but I also wanted to keep my career. So I kind of worked it out so that I could sort of do both. I worked from home. I managed, as a toxicologist, sometimes you can do that because you can consult and you can teach. Um, and fortunately, I had a partner who could also help support. So I did that, but sometimes the work dries up. And when it does, I sat there thinking, what did I do? I went through how many years of college and grad school and training and all this stuff, and I'm throwing it away. I'm just sitting here at home. I have no classes to teach. I, the grants dried up. I got nothing. And so there was an article that came out in the New York Times, this was two years ago, about the difficulties. And it wasn't about science. And I think that this can apply, be applied to anything. It's not just about science. It was about women feeling, and sometimes they have to do it all. They need to, they want to have a career or they need to have a career. And they're, they're primary, often primary caregivers, either by choice, a lot of us want to be, um, or not. And so um, I saw that article, and it hit just at a time where it really resonated with me. So I took it. I, I, um, I wrote an email to a listserv that I'm on that's full of scientists. And a lot of these are pretty high power scientists. This listserv is from the AAAS um, former fellows. And it's a place where people talk about professional stuff. They don't talk about, huh, oh, I'm struggling with dealing with the kids while I'm trying to be a scientist. They don't do that. But I did that, and I put that article up there, and I said, look, anybody else feel this way? And the response was really amazing. I got something like 17 pages of emails back from women. But the really interesting thing about it was that they all sent it just to me. They didn't send it back to the whole list. So I had all these emails from all these people who felt they were really happy to find out somebody else you know, wanted to speak about this, and somebody else was struggling, and somebody else, but they, they were afraid to share it with other people because they'd been keeping that hidden because a lot of times you want to show your professional side. You don't want to show the troubles you're having, whether it's family or home, and it doesn't have to be kids. It can be a parent. You know, there are a lot of different... So they didn't want to do that. So I asked, you know, do you mind if I take your names off of this? And I think everybody... And, oh, the only one that went to the whole list. There was one email that sent to the whole list, and, you know, that was, I did it all, and it was no problem. And so... <laughs> I said, you know, do you mind if I take your names off and send it back out to the list? And I did that, and that generated a whole bunch of more responses. And so at that point, you know, I spoke with um, one of the people who had written to me, and, you know, we thought it would be really good to get this out to a broader audience, and which meant putting it together as a book. And so that's really how this book started, um, so that more women could know, so we could really speak up. Um, and so what we hope through this is that other people get that opportunity, you know, other people learn and feel that they can speak up. Um, and so, you know, before I turn over, I just want to say that, like I said, this doesn't just apply to science, and it doesn't just apply to PhDs. It applies to anybody who's trying to, you know, start a career, get a, you know, follow a career, and have, and deal with family obligations at the same time. And for, in my case, it was, what really benefited me was knowing that there are other people out there and we talked a little bit yesterday in yesterday's panel about how important it is to really network and share and listen to other people who are um, either look different from you or the same or having, you know, struggling like you are because you can draw strength from that. Mm -hmm.